Okay, so let's, um, I'm going to kind of walk you through this FRQ, um, you know, as if I was a student. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit um, about how they've changed the um, AP exam. One second, I'm going to turn the light on in my room. It's getting kind of dark all of a sudden. with the AP exam is um, they've, they've changed it this year. And so um, it's, I've got a lot of sessions planned for you guys that really go over a lot of these changes that they've made to the AP exam so um, you guys can be as best prepared as possible. Now, um, unfortunately, the College Board hasn't released a ton of resources um, about this new exam. They've released this huge binder. Um, of stuff, which I have. It's like 250 pages or something. But um, they have a practice, some practice questions of the new style on there, but for the FRQs, they only did two out of three. And so um, one, when we get to that one, the design and experiment FRQ, I will be using an old one for that, um, unless they release a new one in the meantime. Um, but I basically went through all of the old FRQs and I found basically went through all of the old FRQs and I found three that um, kind of follow that format. So that's that's what we're going to do for that day. But today is actually one of the ones that they have released. So we're going to kind of go over one of those new style questions. So let's talk a little bit about the exam. So um, right here, these are some verbs that they use now. Um, for the AP exam. So um, I'm just going to get a pen so I can write here. Okay, so um, they're going to ask you these verbs, and they usually bold them. So there's calculate. Let me see if I can make that a little thicker. There we go. There's calculate, describe, explain, identify, justify, make a claim, and propose a solution. And so those are the those are the main ones. Now, um, really where a lot of kids get stuck is the difference between describe and explain and identify. With identify, you only have to say the thing. But describe, you actually have to describe it. You have to say why. You have to discuss it. And we'll practice that today. There's the, the question we have today is one, it has some describes and it has some um, Identify so you can see the difference about what we include for those. So, but that's the big the big difference there. And then um, for calculating, um, in the past the big thing was no calculators, but now you can have a scientific calculator. So that's new. Um, and basically, they said the reason they did that is um, they wanted to use more realistic numbers. So your numbers won't always come out perfectly. And you'll see a little bit of that um, in the FRQ we do today. So because they've changed that, um, you, you still need to show your work on the FRQs. Um, but if you guys would like to use a calculator, you know, to check your work or whatever, you know, you have to show your work, but then if you want to use the calculator to actually do the math for your FRQs, you're more than welcome to, um, since you are allowed those on the exam. So, and if you see any reference to you can't have a calculator in the course, please let me know, um, because I'm trying to find all of these um, references to the old style exam and correct them as, as we find them. So, if, you know, if you find any references to old style exam, please let me know, and uh, that way I can update it. Um, so this is, this is the third type of free response question, um, and it says that you're going to analyze environmental problem, you're going to propose a solution, and then you're going to do calculations. Okay, so that's, that's the important part here. Um, this one is the math one. Okay. Um, and so it's going to relate to these new little standards they have now, practice concepts 1, 6, and 7. And, um, but basically, they're a math FRQ. And when we get to the math FRQ, you'll see the whole thing isn't math, but some of it is. So here's the FRQ. And you can see um, 
Usually the way I can tell it's going to be a math FRQ is right here. Do you see how in the prompt they've given me some numbers already? That lets me know it's definitely going to be a math FRQ. Okay. Uh, that's just my clue in, you know, when I read these. Um, so you can see, I just want to point out a couple things about this FRQ and then we'll get into like actually solving it. Um, you can see they mentioned describe here and they mentioned identify, describe. A lot of times I'm getting ready to do an FRQ. I know they bold it, but I'll go ahead and um, underline all of these bold ones while I'm reading it. That way, you know, I really know what I need to do. Um, so this one is describe some advantages. We're going to get more into this deep, more detail later, but you can see this part doesn't require any math. Okay, so what's cool about um, these math FRQs, where did that come from? Um, is that if you have um, if you have a math FRQ and you have no clue how to do the math on the FRQ, you usually can still get some points on that FRQ. And that hasn't changed from before. It was the same way before. So you can see about um, about half of it is math and half of it is not. Okay, so um, it's, it's really important that you know that because then, you know, when you see one of these on your AP exam, you know, some students just freeze up and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to do the math and they just stop doing it or stop trying or they go on to the next one. But on a math one, you can always get some points, almost half of the points, just by answering the written part, and then, you know, you can go back and do the math later. Um, another cool thing about the math is each section is graded separately. So let's say, for example, you need the answer from Part C to solve Part D. If you don't know how to do Part C, but you do know how to do Part D, you can make up an answer for Part C and pick an easy number to work with, you know, like for Part C maybe, you might not know how to do it, so you might say the answer is, um, you know, 100 kilograms or something. Um, and then you'll use your answer from Part C to do Part D. And if you use your incorrect answer from Part C correctly to solve Part D, then you get the points for Part D. They're not going to basically double jeopardy you where you got Part C wrong, so then all of a sudden you get everything wrong. Um, if, as long as you use your incorrect answer from Part C correctly to solve Part D, then you'll get the points for Part D. So that's also kind of handy. So they really do try and make it where you can earn, you know, a pretty decent amount of partial credit. So um, let's go on here. So this one says, describe uh, one environmental advantage of producing food locally. And this is similar to an FRQ you guys will have a little later uh, where they talk about um, producing food locally. Um, and the big answer that students like to put for that one is um, there's no transportation cost, okay? And, but you can't just say there's no transportation cost, right? Um, you've got to describe it. So what I've got here, um, unfortunately I can't write as fast as I can talk. Okay, so that's, that's identify, right? If I do that, I don't get any points. So I need to describe why there is no transportation cost is an environmental advantage, okay? Basically, which reduces fossil fuel use. Okay, I still haven't brought it back to the environment, right? I've got to bring it back to the environment in order to get full points. Okay, so then I'm going to say the products of fossil fuel combustion or burning fossil fuels, that might be a little easier to say. Whoa. I write too fast. 
It uh, has all sorts of weird stuff, so sorry it's so slow. The products of burning fossil fuels contributes to increase global warming. We're getting closer, right? Now, if we leave it here, you know, basically for these FRQs, you're trying to prove to someone that you're deserving of those AP points, right? So this isn't going to be nearly enough, right? You've got increased global warming. I mean, pretty much almost anyone on my Facebook feed could probably get that far, okay? So then we need to go even farther, and then we're, that's how we're really going to get that point for describing an environmental advan uh, advantage, okay? which can result in decreased biodiversity. Or ocean acidification or something like that. Now, for this problem, you could have also said no transportation costs reduces fossil fuel use, and then you could talk about how, like, mining for fossil fuels or whatever disrupts the environment, and you wouldn't have to do as much of that for producing food locally, you know, stuff like that. So, um, you know, you can, you can almost, you can use no transportation costs and then relate it somehow to the environment anyway. Okay, this is just the one that I chose because it's one that students frequently do for that FRQ. We have a little later in the course. Okay. So now this says vegetable production in the garden was less than expected for the season. Identify one soil property that affects crop production. So um, you could write something like nutrient content. Um, when I took the FRQ, because um, I actually saw, I actually went through this last night in practice as if I was a student. There's no key for this one released yet, so I, you know, I really just did it on my own. Um, I put nitrogen content. And since it says identify, that's all we have to write. We don't have to write a sentence or anything like that or, you know, that long thing we did before with describe. Since it's identify, that's all we have to do. We just have to identify. So then it says the gardener applied a synthetic fertilizer to the garden for the next growing season. Describe one benefit of using synthetic fertilizer in the garden. Okay, so a synthetic fertilizer is like a fertilizer that you buy, let's say, like at Home Depot or something. Um, it's in a bag or, um, you know, something like that, and you spread it around your yard. Okay, um, the good thing about synthetic fertilizer is it has a guaranteed nutrient content. Okay, so I'm going to write that. That's one of the good things. It's also easy to get, and it doesn't smell nearly as much usually as the other ones. Now, if we just stick with guaranteed nitrogen content or guaranteed um, nutrient content, we've ID'd, but we haven't described, so we wouldn't get our points. So I need to say a little more why that's important. So then I'm going to say, so you know exactly what you're putting on your soil. Okay, and then I'm going to write part the third one in a different color because I feel like I'm going to run out of space. And so I want to go ahead and uh, I th I'm going to start up here and I may have to go down to the bottom. So I want to make sure that you guys can 
tell what's going where. So the last spot says a neighbor proposes using compost rather than the synthetic fertilizer on the garden, saying that compost is more sustainable agricultural practice, and then justify this claim. Okay, so basically compost is more sustainable because it's releasing nutrients from things that are already decomposing rather than adding synthetic chemicals that can, you know, contribute to runoff or whatever to your garden. Um, so I'm going to write that. Ooh, this is... It's not wanting to write um, what I have at all. Whoa. I'm going to try my best. I think it's reading my hand. Whoa. So um, just while I'm writing this, um, so justify is a new word. Usually that's not um, really a common word that they use, but it's basically another way to say describe or explain. Um, um, so it's, it's one of those where you'll want to actually, you know, describe something. Well, this is not fitting very well at all. Okay, I'm going to continue it down here and see if I can get it to fit. And then you could write something like contributes, you know, talk about how it could contribute to runoff. You know, which could uh, pollute waterways or whatever. Okay, it doesn't want to make dots, it looks like. So that's kind of how um, you would do, like, the word part of this FRQ. So now let's try and do the math part. Um, so... Okay, so for this one, uh, they're telling you that your fertilizer has 34% nitrogen and the recommended application rate is 1 kilogram of nitrogen per 70 square meters. So you need to figure out how much um, synthetic fertilizer you need. Okay, so um, your garden, they already told you, whoa, that your garden... This is... Okay. Um... is, um, oh, what is going on here? Um, okay, they told you your garden is 50 by 70, so it's 350 meters squared. So then you want to take that 350 and then, um, so we've got 350 meters squared, and we need to get um, we need to get right kilograms. So the only thing we have that works with kilograms is 70 square meters. That one kilogram per 70 square meters, right? 
So if we put this in here like this, it'll get rid of our meters and it'll get our units in the units that we want, which is kilograms. So um, 350 divided by 70 is 5 kilograms of nitrogen for the garden. Now, do you see how I wrote this part too? I didn't just write the number answer. For the, um, for the AP exam, you need to do that as well. Um, you can't just write five. Um, you'll have to write the units as well. So let's go to the, oh dear. Took me all the way back to the beginning. Hello. Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about, about an open-ended question. Um, so now it says the gardener finds a local compost source with 2.5% nitrogen. Calculate the number of kilograms of compost that would be needed to add to the garden to provide as much nitrogen um, as using the synthetic fertilizer. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to see um, that synthetic fertilizer, we need to see actually how many kilograms of that is nitrogen. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of do a so then I'm just going to do this kind of math that I'm sure you guys have done plenty of times. I used, they used to make us do this in middle school. Okay, so we have 1.7 kilograms of nitrogen in that 34% fertilizer. So now we need to see, um, you know, in that 2.5% fertilizer, How much, you know, if we, if we need 1.7 kilograms of nitrogen, how many total um, kilograms of this fertilizer are we going to need? And so we're going to kind of set it up a little bit differently. And it's not. There we go. That gets it to stay. And so then your answer is uh, 68 kilograms. Okay, so we'll need 68 kilograms of that 2.5% um, nitrogen compost in order to um, have the same amount of nitrogen as that synthetic fertilizer. So you can see you need a lot more of um, compost then you do synthetic fertilizer. So now let's see, let's talk about the price, right? We, we know the amount's different, but let's look at the price. So the synthetic is um, 3.11 per kilogram, and um, the compost is 4 cents a, um, a kilogram. So now we're going to calculate the savings to provide a kilogram of nitrogen per 70 meters using compost rather than nitrogen. So even though we need so much more compost, it's still going to be um, cheaper. So let's see. We have 5 kilograms of the synthetic times 3.11 is $15.55. So you can see these numbers. You know, you wouldn't be able to use these numbers if you didn't have a calculator. Um, you know, they'd have to make really nice and tidy numbers. But since they can... Um, you're allowed to use calculators now. They're allowed to use numbers that aren't as nice and tidy. Um, but they've promised that the math isn't any more difficult than it was previously. It's just the numbers are going to be a little more realistic. Um, and then the 68 kilograms of the compost times 4 cents is $2.72. So you're still going to save, you know, a significant amount of money um, using compost over the synthetic, over the, um, or, yeah, using compost over the synthetic, even though you're going to need so, so much more compost. So you're going to save $12.83 using the compost. Okay, so that's how you'll do, um, one of these math-based FRQs, and, and like I said, the math is very, the, this one is basically very similar to ones we've had before. So, um, you know, the previous FRQs are a very good indicator of these um, types of FRQs.